I'm going to um, add in a counter object with the numbers 1 to 3 in it. So it's going to count through 1 to 3, which uh, is going to be uh, referring to our players 1, 2 and 3. And then I'm going to make a pack object with 0 and, and S in it. And I'm going to put in a, a trigger object. Now I talked about the trigger when I was uh, when I was discussing the Liddell emulator. Um, so go and have a look at that if you don't know what I'm doing. So what should happen here is Cole should output depending on wh whatever's being output from, you know, uh, whatever um, uh, whatever item is being output, sound 1, sound 2, sound 3, something like that, it will go into the trigger object. The trigger will throughput that message, so sound 1, sound 2, sound 3, whichever it is, um, through to this, uh, remember I talked about reserved, mes uh, re reserved arguments, so S means that it will throughput the symbol that's come in, and that will be sent directly to the right-hand inlet of the pack object. Meanwhile, um, the, or immediately after that, the uh, trigger will send out a bang message into counter, which makes it count. Um, and so each one of those uh, names that's come out of the call object will be allocated a number. So pack would send out a number one with whatever uh, name it's received, then it will send out a number 2 with whatever no name it's received next. Uh, remember the names are coming in at random, so it could be sound 1, it could be sound 8, some sound 12, and each one of those is going to be allocated a number. Um, so maybe it's easiest if I actually uh, demonstrate that here. Okay, so each number, each successive number, is being allocated a different sound. So it's 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3 for it the numbers, but we've got a different sound allocated to each of those. Next, so I'll, I'll pop that to one side, I'm going to run through a root object, which I have mentioned before. I said that there are a variety of means of routing messages in Max. We've used gate, we've used select. This is a, root is a form of select, but what it does is it takes uh, a list and recognises or looks for the first item in that list. In the same way as select looks for a number that in its arguments that corresponds to the number it's received, um, so root will do exactly the same, but it only looks at the first item in the list. When it finds that item, so if it received a number one, then whatever else remains in the list it will spit out of the first outlet. If it receives a 2 and then sound 5, for example, it would send sound 5 out of the second outlet. Um, if it received a 3 with sound 12, it would spit the message sound 12 out of the third outlet. Okay, So it, it absorbs, if you like, the first item in the list and then spits out whatever follows. So if there's a you know a five, five items in the list, then it will spit out four items out of whichever outlet it's been told to send it out of, which would be determined by the first argument or the first item in the list. I hope that makes sense. Um, so again, we will um, connect that up. I need to make that a little bit lower. Um, and now, if I connect message boxes up here, oops, you should see that's very really well done. There we go. Sorry about the low rumble. I think someone's doing some sound in the next room. You will see that uh, I click on a note and it comes out of the first outlet. Remember that the number is absorbed by root and it just spits out the message that it was received. And then the next note will come out of, I, of outlet 2. And I press another number and it comes out of outlet 3. I press another number, and now that count has finished counting to three, it will jump back to one again. So the first outlet will get a new number. And so we can keep going on like that. So each successive note is sent to a successive root outlet. 
and you've probably already guessed all we need to do now is to send them to the successive player objects and then we can send the player outlets to the um, easy DAC output like that um, and so although this is very messy I'll clean that up in a minute and I'll show you quite a neat way of doing that we should get polyphony so you'll notice that the uh, uh, reverberation on the symbol or the symbol you know crash tail is not cut off until it, until three notes later or three uh, three sounds later which means that three sounds are able to play at once so we have three voice polyphony and the likelihood is we would want more than that so we can basically duplicate everything that we've already done in order to or at least uh, you know change some of the arguments and add some player objects to get it to um, play a greater number of voices um, you'll notice incidentally that this is all a bit messy down here so we'll do something to neaten that up a little bit what I'm going to do um, and this was something shown to me by um, Eric Onya um, who's an amazingly intelligent guy um, who's currently working in Basel in Switzerland um, who uh, did at one time work at Birmingham and uh, was very uh, very useful for us all there. Anyway, uh, so I'm going to go into here and open up the original player object and I'm going to add a couple of inlets to there and to there. and one outlet. That means that I've got three inlets and three outlets. And if I save that patch, they appear obviously um, on, on the player objects down here. Now this means, rather cunningly, apart from the fact that these, these are now wrongly assigned to cables, um, make those a little bit bigger, I can put them one underneath each other and just connect. This is the left outlet and that's the right outlet. And of course, because those are that these are our uh, left and right outlets, but they are now being run through these two inlets. So we've got a kind of through, um, a sound through, in the same way as you have a MIDI through that will allow you to send things through an object to get to another one. And so we can put them in order vertically um, and then I can kind of shift them off to the side here I need to make my patch a bit bigger and very easily we can make multiple voices of polyphony and then just send the outlet of the last one to our um, sound outlet, which is kind of handy. Um, and then of course I would need to add, how many have we got there? We should have 12, I think. So 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. And if I connect all of those up, we end up with quite a nice I guess it's a parabola. There. Um, and I just need to add um, a number to counter to tell it to count between 1 and 12. And now we have 12 voice polyphony. So if you understood all of that, um, then you now have a means of, of generating you know, several sounds at the same time. And you notice that all the reverb, um, all the, uh, you know, the resonance of the various instruments doesn't, uh, isn't curtailed. And moreover, if you do the random thing, then the same sound can happen several times in succession. 